Gaius Valerius Catullus, Latin, Ca tls, c. 84 c. 54 BC was a Latin poet of the late Roman Republic who wrote chiefly in the Neoteric style of poetry, which is about personal life rather than classical heroes. His surviving works are still read widely and continue to influence poetry and other forms of art. Catullus's poems were widely appreciated by other poets. He greatly influenced Ovid, Horace, Virgil, and others. After his rediscovery in the late Middle Ages, Catullus again found admirers. The explicit sexual imagery which he uses in some of his poems has shocked many readers. Indeed, Catullus's work was never canonical in schools, although his body of work is still frequently read from secondary school to graduate programs across the world, with his 64th poem often considered his greatest. Life Gaius Valerius Catullus classical Latin, A, I, S, Wa, Re, S, Ca, T, L, Ls, was born to a leading equestrian family of Verona, in Cisalpine Gaul. The social prominence of the Catullus family allowed the father of Gaius Valerius to entertain Julius Caesar when he was the promagistrate proconsul of both Gallic provinces. In a poem, Catullus describes his happy homecoming to the family villa at Sermio, on Lake Garda, near Verona. He also owned a villa near the resort of Tiber. Tivoli. Catullus appears to have spent most of his young adult years in Rome. His friends there included the poets Licinius Calvus, and Helvius Cinna, Quintus Hortensius, son of the orator and rival of Cicero, and the biographer Cornelius Nepos, to whom Catullus dedicated a libellus of poems, the relation of which to the extant collection remains a matter of debate. He appears to have been acquainted with the poet Marcus Furius Bibaculus. A number of prominent contemporaries appear in his poetry, including Cicero, Caesar and Pompey. According to an anecdote preserved by Suetonius, Caesar did not deny that Catullus's lampoons left an indelible stain on his reputation, but when Catullus apologized, he invited the poet for dinner the very same day. It was probably in Rome that Catullus fell deeply in love with the Lesbia. Of his poems, who is usually identified with Clodia Metelli, a sophisticated woman from the aristocratic house of patrician family Claudi Pulchri, sister of the infamous Publius Clodius Pulcher, and wife to proconsul Quintus Cecilius Metellus Seller. In his poems Catullus describes several stages of their relationship, initial euphoria, doubts, separation, and his wrenching feelings of loss. Clodia had several other partners. From the poems one can adduce no fewer than five lovers in addition to Catullus, Ignatius poem 37, Gellius poem 91, Quintius poem 82, Rufus poem 77, and Lesbius poem 79. There is also some question surrounding her husband's mysterious death in 59 BC, some critics believing he was domestically poisoned. Yet, a sensitive and passionate Catullus could not relinquish his flame for Clodia, regardless of her obvious indifference to his desire for a deep and permanent relationship. In his poems, Catullus wavers between devout, sweltering love and bitter, scornful insults that he directs at her blatant infidelity as demonstrated in poems 11 and 58. His passion for her is unrelenting, yet it is unclear when exactly the couple split up for good. Catullus's poems about the relationship display striking depth and psychological insight. He spent the provincial command year summer 57 to summer 56 BC in Bithynia on the staff of the commander Gaius Memmius. While in the east, he traveled to the Trode to perform rites at his brother's tomb, an event recorded in a moving poem. There survives no ancient biography of Catullus, his life has to be pieced together from scattered references to him in other ancient authors and from his poems. Thus it is uncertain when he was born and when he died. Saint Jerome says that he died in his thirtieth year, and was born in 87 BC. But the poems include references to events of 55 and 54 BC. Since the Roman consular fasti make it somewhat easy to confuse 87 to 57 BC with 84 to 54 BC, many scholars accept the dates 84 BC to 54 BC, supposing that his latest poems and the publication of his libellus coincided with the year of his death. Other authors suggest 52 or 51 BC as the year of the poet's death. Though upon his elder brother's death, Catullus lamented that their whole house was buried along. With the deceased, the existence and prominence of Valerie Catulli is attested in the following centuries. T. P. Wiseman argues that after the brother's death Catullus could have married, and that, in this case, the later Valerie Catulli may have been his descendants. 
Topic: Poetry. Topic: Sources and organization. Catullus's poems have been preserved in an anthology of 116 Carmina the actual number of poems may slightly vary in various editions, which can be divided into three parts according to their form, 60 short poems in varying meters, called polymetra, 8 longer poems, and 48 epigrams. There is no scholarly consensus on whether Catullus himself arranged the order of the poems. The longer poems differ from the polymetra and the epigrams not only in length but also in their subjects. There are seven hymns and one mini epic, or epilion, the most highly prized form for the new poets. The polymetra and the epigrams can be divided into four major thematic groups, ignoring a rather large number of poems that elude such categorization. Poems to and about his friends, e.g., an invitation like Poem 13. Erotic poems, some of them 50 and 99 are about his homosexual desires and acts, but most are about women, especially about one he calls Lesbia, which served as a false name for his married girlfriend, Clodia, source and inspiration of many of his poems. Invectives, often rude and sometimes downright obscene poems targeted at friends turned traitors e.g., Poem 16, Other Lovers of Lesbia, well-known poets, politicians e.g., Julius Caesar and readers, including Cicero. Condolences, some poems of Catullus are solemn in nature. 96 comforts a friend in the death of a loved one, several others, most famously 101, lament the death of his brother. All these poems describe the lifestyle of Catullus and his friends, who, despite Catullus's temporary political post in Bithynia, lived their lives withdrawn from politics. They were interested mainly in poetry and love. Above all other qualities, Catullus seems to have valued venustas, or charm, in his acquaintances, a theme which he explores in a number of his poems. The ancient Roman concept of virtus i.e. a virtue that had to be proved by a political or military career, which Cicero suggested as the solution to the societal problems of the late Republic, meant little to them. However Catullus does not reject traditional notions, but rather their particular application to the vita octiva of politics and war. Indeed, he tries to reinvent these notions from a personal point of view and to introduce them into human relationships. For example, he applies the word fides, which traditionally meant faithfulness towards one's political allies, to his relationship with Lesbia and reinterprets it as unconditional faithfulness in love. So, despite the seeming frivolity of his lifestyle, Catullus measured himself and his friends by quite ambitious standards. <laughs> <laughs> Intellectual influences Catullus's poetry was influenced by the innovative poetry of the Hellenistic Age, and especially by Callimachus and the Alexandrian school, which had propagated a new style of poetry that deliberately turned away from the classical epic poetry in the tradition of Homer. Cicero called these local innovators neoteroi, neoteroi or moderns in Latin poete novi or new poets, in that they cast off the heroic model handed down from Ennius in order to strike new ground and ring a contemporary note. Catullus and Callimachus did not describe the feats of ancient heroes and gods except perhaps in re-evaluating and predominantly artistic circumstances, e.g. poems 63 and 64, focusing instead on small-scale personal themes. Although these poems sometimes seem quite superficial and their subjects often are mere everyday concerns, they are accomplished works of art. Catullus described his work as expolitum, or polished, to show that the language he used was very carefully and artistically composed. Catullus was also an admirer of Sappho, a female poet of the 7th century BC, and is the source for much of what we know or infer about her. Catullus 51 follows Sappho 31 so closely that some believe the later poem to be, in part, a direct translation of the earlier poem, and 61 and 62 are certainly inspired by and perhaps translated directly from lost works of Sappho. Both of the latter are epithalamia, a form of laudatory or erotic wedding poetry that Sappho had been famous for but that had gone out of fashion in the intervening centuries. Catullus twice used a meter that Sappho developed, called the Sapphic Strophe, in poems 11 and 51. In fact, Catullus may have brought about a substantial revival of that form in Rome. Catullus, as was common to his era, was greatly influenced by stories from Greek and Roman myth. His longer poems, such as 63, 64, 65, 66, and 68—allude to mythology in various ways. 
Some stories he refers to are the wedding of Peleus and Thetis, the departure of the Argonauts, Theseus and the Minotaur, Ariadne's abandonment, Tereus and Procne, as well as Protesilaus and Laodamia. Topic. Style Catullus wrote in many different meters including hendecasyllabic verse and elegiac couplets common in love poetry. A great part of his poetry shows strong and occasionally wild emotions, especially in regard to lesbia. Catullus describes his lesbia as having multiple suitors and often showing little affection towards him. He also demonstrates a great sense of humor such as in Catullus 13. Topic. Musical settings Catullus Dreams 2011 is a song cycle by David Glazer set to texts of Catullus. The cycle is scored for soprano and seven instruments. It was premiered at Symphony Space in New York by soprano Linda Larson and Sequitur Ensemble. Catulli Carmina is a cantata by Carl Orff to the texts of Catullus. Carmina Catulli is a song cycle arranged from 17 of Catullus' poems by American composer Michael Linton. The cycle was recorded in December 2013 and premiered at Carnegie Hall's Weill Recital Hall in March 2014 by French baritone Edwin Crossley Mercer and pianist Jason Paul Peterson. Catullus V, the love poem, Vivimus mea lesbia atqui amimus, in the translation by Ben Johnson was set to music lute accompanied song by Alfonso Farabasco the Younger. Thomas Campion also wrote a lute song using his own translation of the first six lines of Catullus V followed by two verses of his own. The translation by Richard Crashaw was set to music in a four-part glee by Samuel Webb Jr. It was also set to music in a three-part glee by John Stafford Smith. Finnish jazz singer Rain Ramon has recorded poems of Catullus set to standard jazz tunes. The American composer, Ned Roram, set Catullus 101 to music for voice and piano. The song, Catullus, On the Burial of His Brother was originally published in 1969. The Icelandic composer, Johan Johansson, set Catullus 85 to music. The poem is sung through a vocoder. The music is played by a string quartet and piano. Titled, Odi et Amo, the song is found on Johansson's album Ingleborn. Topic cultural depictions Catullus was the main protagonist of the historical novel Farewell, Catullus 1953 by Pearson Dixon. The novel shows the corruption of the Roman society. A poem by Catullus is being recited to Cleopatra in the eponymous 1963 film When Julius Caesar Comes to Visit Her, they talk about him, Cleopatra, Catullus doesn't approve of you. Why haven't you had him killed, Caesar, because I approve of him, and Caesar then recites other poems by him. Topic see also Codex Vaticanus Autobonianus Latinus 1829 Poetry of Catullus Prosody Latin Topic Notes Topic Further reading Balmé, M. Morewood, J. 1997. Oxford Latin Reader. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Bomber, J. 2004. Catullus, Poems of Love and Hate. Hexham, Bloodax. Barrett, A. A. Catullus 52 and the Consulship of Vatinius. Transactions and Proceedings of the American Philological Association, 103 to 23 minus 38. Barwick, K. 1958. Zeichlin B E I Marshall und in den kleinen Gedichten des Catul. Philologists, 102 to 284 minus 318. Clays, P. 2002. Concatenatio Catuliana, a new reading of the Carmina. Amsterdam, J C. Gieben Clark, Jacqueline. 2006. Bridal Songs, Catullan Epithalamia and Prudentius Peristephanon III. Antichthon. 4289-103. Coleman, K. M. The Persona of Catullus Phasilus. Greece and Rome. NS 28-68-72. doi, 10.1017 per seconds 0017383500033507. Detmer, Helena Love by the Numbers, Form and the Meaning in the Poetry of Catullus. Peter Lang Publishing. Dooling, Judy Catullus 17 and 67, and the Catullan Construct. Antichthon. 42-1-9. Dory, T.A. The Aurelii and the Fari. Proceedings of the African Classical Associations, 2-9-10. Duhigg, J. 
The Elegiac Meter of Catullus. Antichthon. 557-67. Ellis, R. 1889. A Commentary on Catullus. Oxford, Clarendon Press. Ferguson, J. Catullus and Marshall. Proceedings of the African Classical Associations. 6-3-15. Ferguson, J. Catullus. Greece and Rome, New Surveys in the Classics, 20. Oxford, Clarendon Press. Ferrero, L. 1955. Interpretazioni di Catullo in Italian. Torino, Torino, Rosenberg and Sellier. Fitzgerald, W. 1995. Catullan Provocations, Lyric Poetry and the Drama of Position. Berkeley, University of California Press. Fletcher, G. B. A. 1967. Catulliana. Latimus, 26-104-106. Fletcher, G. B. A. 1991. Further Catuliana. Latimus. 50 92 93. Fordyce, C. J. Catullus, A Commentary. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Gaser, Julia Haig. Catullus and his Renaissance readers. Oxford, Clarendon Press. Green, Ellen. Catullus, Caesar and the Roman Masculine Identity. Antichthon. 40-49-64. Hallett, Judith 2006. Catullus and Horace on Roman Women Poets. Antichthon. 40-65-88. Harrington, Carl Pomeroy 1963. Catullus and His Influence. New York, Cooper Square Publishers. Havelock, E.A. 1939. The Lyric Genius of Catullus. Oxford, B. Blackwell. Hild, Christian 2013. Liebsgedicht A.L.S. Wagnus. Emotionen und generationell Prozess in Catulls Lesbiagedichten. St. Ingbert, Rorig. ISBN 978-3-86110-517-6. Jackson, Anna Catullus in the Playground. Antichthon. 40-104-116. Cogolaris, N. Wedding Cry, Sappho FR, 109 LP, FR, 104 A LP Catullus C. 62. 20 to 5 Modern Greek Folk Songs in Greek in Abdikos, E. Kosio Kolophosia, B. Ed. Modern Greek Folk Songs and History, Karditsa, pp. 260 to 71. Kid, D. A. 1970. Some Problems in Catullus LXVI. Antichthon. 438 49. Kakashkovich, Conrad W. 2004. Et futura panda sieve de Catuli Carmen Sexto Corrigendo. Hermes, 32 125-128. Kroll, Wilhelm. C. Valerius Catullus. In German. Leipzig, B. G. Teubner. Moss, Paul. The Chronology of the Poems of Catullus. Classical Quarterly, 36-79-82. doi, 10.1017 per seconds 00098388000246605. Martin, Charles. 1992. Catullus. New Haven, Yale Univ. Press. ISBN 0 300 05199 9. Monroe, H. A. J. 1878. Criticisms and Elucidations of Catullus. Cambridge, Dayton, Bell and Co. Newman, John Kevin. 1990. Roman Catullus and the Modification of the Alexandrian Sensibility. Hildesheim, Weidman. Quinn, Kenneth. 1959. The Catullan Revolution. Melbourne, Melbourne University Press. Quinn, Kenneth. 1973. Catullus, The Poems, Second Ed. London, Macmillan. Rothstein, Max. 1923. Catul und Lesbia. Philologus. 78 1-34. Small, Stuart G. P. 1983. Catullus. Lanham, M. D., University Press of America. ISBN 0-8191-2905-4. Swan, Bruce W. 1994. Marshall's Catullus. The Reception of an Epigrammatic Rival. Hildesheim, Georg Olms. Thompson, Douglas Ferguson Scott. 1997. Catullus, edited with a textual and interpretive commentary. Phoenix, 34, Supple. Toronto, University of Toronto Press. ISBN 0 8020 0676 0. Townend, G. B. 1980. A Further Point in Catullus' Attack on Volusius. 
Greece and Rome, N. S. 27-134-136. doi. 10.1017 per seconds 00173835000257912. Townend, G. B. 1983. The Unstated Climax of Catullus 64. Greece and Rome, N. S. 30-21-30. doi. 10.1017 per seconds 00173835000257912. Townend, G. B. 1983. Hidden Kisses in Catullus, Poems 5, 6, 7 and 8. Antichthon. 40-10-18. Tuplin, C.J. 1981. Catullus 68. Classical Quarterly. N. S. 31 to 113 minus 139. Doi 10.1017 per seconds 00098388000211x. Uden, James. 2006. Embracing the Young Man in Love. Catullus 75 and the Comic Adolescence. Antichthon. 40 to 19 minus 34. Watson, Lindsay C. 2003. Boss's Borborisms on Marshall and Catullus. Antichthon. 37 to 1 minus 12. Watson, Lindsay C. 2006. Catullus and the Poetics of Incest. Antichthon. 40 to 35 minus 48. Wheeler, A. L. 1934. Catullus and the Traditions of Ancient Poetry. Sather Classical Lectures, 9. Berkeley, University of California Press. Willemowitz Mollendorf, Ulrich von 1913. Sappho und Simonides in German. Berlin, Weidmann. Wiseman, T.P. 1969. Catullan Questions. Leicester, Leicester University Press. Wiseman, T.P. 2002. Catullus and His World, A Reappraisal, 1st PBK. Ed. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0 521 31968 4. Wiseman, T. P. 1974. Sin of the Poet and Other Roman Essays. Leicester, Leicester University Press. ISBN 0 7185 1120 4. External links Works by Catullus at Perseus Digital Library Works by Gaius Valerius Catullus at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Catullus at Internet Archive Works by Catullus at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Catullus Translations, Catullus's work in Latin and multiple ten or more modern languages, including scanned versions of every poem Catullus in Latin and English Catullus translated exclusively in English translated by A.S. Klein Catullus Online, searchable Latin text, repertory of conjectures, and images of the most important manuscripts Catullus, Latin text, concordances and frequency list Catullus Purified, a brief history of Carmen 16 by Thomas Nelson Winter Sorgll, Catullus 5, read by Robert Sonkowski a translation of Catullus's Ad Sirmium Insulum translated by Douglas Thornton.